<sighs> hey, brew dudes. It's Mike here. Drinking a little uh, Pilsner, commercial Pilsner from uh, Notch Brewing Company. A little session pills. It's pretty nice. Got me thinking about uh, brewing some beer. I have some lager yeast out in the fridge. Uh, the wife is away. So I thought it might be a perfect time to uh, give that small batch brewing a try. And I've got the uh, small batch gear assembled. I've brought it in the house. I'm going to try to uh, beat the winter weather and do that small batch brewing I talked about in a video, uh, previous video. So let's turn the camera around and I'll show you the equipment that I've brought inside and uh, talk about what I'm going to brew. Cheers. All right, brew dudes. So here you see, here I've got it in the, in the house on my, uh, the island here. I've got my uh, small brew pot. It's a two and a half gallon brew pot. Got my beverage cooler that I showed you before with the uh, stainless braid inside and uh, the hose. I give it a dry run with some hot water and didn't even need to put a uh, hose clamp on there. It looks like it's going to hold, so uh, hopefully that holds out once I start stirring the mash in there. But then this is it. These are all the ingredients for my small batch beer. So what I've got here is uh, two and a half pounds of Pilsner malt and Got about 50 grams of Victory, 50 grams of Cara Munich, and 10 grams of Carafa uh, Special 3. So I'm going to shoot for some sort of red, maybe a dark lager. Then this, uh, this little bit of hops here, that's all it's going to take in there. That's half an ounce of Warrior hops. And I'm, I think what I'm going to do, just to make this brew session even faster, I'm going to do a shortened boil. I think I'm going to boil for maybe 30 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. We'll see how I feel about it. Then I'm going to put those hops in and I'm only going to bo uh, boil those hops for maybe 10 minutes. And then I'm going to do like a 20 minute hop stand. So that's a high alpha hop, those warrior hops. Uh, all I'm really looking to get is some bittering out of it and I figure 20 minute hop stand afterwards I might get some interesting residual flavor from the high alpha in the shortened boil. So I'm just going to do enough boil to, to sterilize the wort and uh, get a good hot break um, and then put it all uh, in the fermenter. So I'll show you that later. But first I'm going to uh, start heating up water in that pot. Uh, I brought in all of my thermometers and I've got my hydrometer and my trusty refractometer. So I'll be using all the big toys but just be doing this little maybe two gallon uh, mash and uh, see what we get. So. Uh, on to heating some water and I'll check back in once I get the mash set up. Alright, here we are back again brew dudes. It doesn't take long. It only took me 10 minutes to get this water up to 160 degrees. Shooting for something in the low 150s. We'll see what I get. Here's my last scoop of grain. Got this, just thrown it in here. Stir that stuff in. And, uh, a little bit of a thinner mash than usual, but I'm looking for super fermentability here, so I don't know how much of that really helps, but so here we go, pretty well stirred up and in there. I mean, there's no dough balls in there. That's nice and thin, thick mash, a little more than one and a half quarts per pound, probably. So I'll throw my thermometer in there and take a temp reading and wait for it to equilibrate and see where we end up. All right, it's been about 10 minutes, 5 minutes or so. Let's check that temperature on this mash. See where we're at here. See if you can see that. See if I can see it. All right, 154-ish. 154-ish. Stir that thing around here. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. About 150-ish, 148, 150, 49 in there. Feel pretty good about those numbers, so we're gonna cover this up. Put that lid on there. Get this hose out of the way so I can get that lid on. So far, it, this has been 15 minutes. Water, grain in there, and I'm mashing. So definitely, so far a big upside to the small batch is gonna be speed. So there we go. Um, so we'll check it out when uh, we get ready to do the first runnings. All right, we're back. It's been an hour. Mash has gone pretty well so far. It's holding temperature at about 150, 
151 or so, which is right in target what I want. It's been an hour. Uh, I put the match on up on this toaster just to give me a little bit of height difference. I've already done my Vorloff, and I'm going to run off now into my my pot here. So let's get a look at this color, this wart. So it's pretty, pretty nice. It's a pretty nice color. I don't know. We'll maybe we'll in the end end up with a deeper ruby beer or something. We'll see how it comes out in the fermenter. It's always hard to tell, I think, at this stage. But, it's, but it is dark. It's going to be a darker lager, so that's cool. That's what I was shooting for. So, um, I think I changed my idea on the hops, too, now that we're running off this wort. I think I changed my mind, and we're going to go with the four, first wort hopping. So, in they go. So, figure just in case, you know, it's too much hops or something, at least uh, supposedly with first wort hopping, it'll be a little bit more of a smoother bitterness so um, and then you can see I am done running off that only took like 30 seconds so alright gotta get my sparge water in there um, we'll check in again once I get the boil started okay this is where we're at right now is I've got uh, a boiling uh, a boil going on just just under eight gallons after I sparged I actually found realized that I had I suspected this would happen with two and a half pounds of malt for only one gallon, but I had a gravity of about 1077. There's the what's left of the mash right there, and I have so that's a lot of points. And if I calculated it out to one gallon, then that would be about 1055, which is where I want to be. So I didn't sparge this at all. I added just about another gallon of water to it for boil off purposes. So I'm boiling gently now. I'll try to boil off a three quarters of a gallon or so, and I expect to get in that 10.55 to 10.60 range for the original for the starting gravity of the beer itself. So, uh, kind of a no sparge brew process actually, which should result in a very malt forward uh, lager. So, um, but I did add some uh, yeast nutrient and some yeast energizer because I am just going to pitch about a third of a White Labs vial of uh, Bach yeast. That little crumb there, that's my uh, Werflock. I broke a tablet in half, probably still overkill. Um, because I'm going to be fermenting in the small fermenter, I'm using a little foam control. And because I'm on the stove in the house, I put a couple drops of that into the boil just to prevent me from uh, having a big mess and have to clean it up inside the house. So, uh, Speaking of fermenter, let me just show you what I've got here. So this is about almost... Uh, this is like a one gallon jug of wine, basically, jug wine. So I've washed this, then I'm going to sanitize it and put the beer in here. So we'll check in in a little bit once I get to, uh, to that point. Okay, here's the finished product. <clears throat> Probably just under a gallon of uh, wort in there. I shook it up, so it's pretty well aerated. I know my garage is uh, 48 degrees right now, which would be perfect. Uh, I've chilled this down to about 60 or so with the cold water in the sink as a water bath. I drained the sink already, but you get the idea. And uh, so tomorrow morning I'll uh, pitch my yeast and uh, we'll be off to the races with this small batch lager. Uh, so stay tuned, maybe in uh, four weeks or so we'll be doing a tasting of this uh, small batch lager. So uh, small batch brewing has been quick, it's been fun, easy, piece of cake. Um, Thanks for watching and uh, brew on.